Good morning, saints, and welcome to our Sunday morning Bible class. We are continuing during this season of Lent, uh, and we will, on into Easter, continue to study uh, the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke. Uh, this, uh, this morning, uh, we're moving on with the famous story of the woman who wept, uh, who washed Jesus' feet, uh, with uh, with her tears, and also the uh, the 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 one who uh, who who washed his feet with her hair, uh, and it's the story of Jesus being invited to the house of Simon the Pharisee. The theme of our of our study is the un is in unconditional love. Excuse me, unconditional love, and it's taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter seven verses 36 to 50, Luke 7, 36 to 50. But now let's take a moment and ask the Lord's blessing upon our Bible study. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of Jesus. And during this season of Lent, we are reminded how much you love us and how your love for us is not predicated on any love we have for you or anything we've done or could ever do. It was all your unconditional love for us, unmerited, undeserving. And so, Lord, help us now as we study your word and as we continue to walk through these 40 days of Lent to really know how much you love us and to use the love that you've given us to be used for the love of others and to know how much you really do love us and love the world. And so, Lord, I ask that you give us all wisdom and understanding. I also pray, dear Lord, that you give me accuracy of interpretation and that you give me clarity of speech. And we pray that you brought someone with us today who hasn't ordinarily watched or even someone who may not know if they believe in Christ will come to believe in him through this study. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So saints, once again, Luke 7, 36 to 50, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Now, a review of the text, I gave us a general review, but in our study for this morning, a religious leader named Simon invites the Lord Jesus to his home for a dinner or supper. Now, a party in those days was a public event the same as uh, weddings. Homes at that time had open courts and the uninvited could stand around and observe the guests and all the festivities. At that time they ate as the Romans did with a table in the middle of the room and many couches around it. Jesus was reclining in this manner at the, at the home of Simon when a woman, an uninvited woman came up and wept over him. Her tears washed his feet, and she dried them with her hair. Simon's reaction, or the host's reaction, revealed a lot about him. Jesus' reaction to what she did revealed a whole lot about him, especially his purpose of coming into the world to be the savior of the world. So with that knowledge in our heads this morning, let us now take a look at our text, Luke 7, 36 to 50. We begin with our first verse. And one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. Now, saints, there are a number of interesting things in this first verse. First of all, we know the Lord never turned down anyone's invitation to him. He always came. He even came uh, to those who sought to harm him. You notice it says, and one of the Pharisees. And we all know the Pharisees were not friends of the Lord Jesus. In fact, they were enemies. And in fact, they may have invited him, or this fair Pharisee, which later we'll come to know when we get to verse 40, his name Simon, probably was calling the Lord Jesus to trick him into something or to find him slip, where it says the Pharisee asked him, Jesus, to eat with him. That means to sup with him, to have dinner with him. 
And Jesus went to the Pharisee's house, no hesitation, and he sat down to eat. That means he reclined on one of these pillows in this round table. And in verse 37, remember we mentioned the people who from the courtyard could observe? Well, behold, a woman in the city. When it says a woman in the city, it means an immoral woman. Maybe she was a prostitute. Maybe she was a woman that had a number of husbands or a number of men. Whoever she was, a woman in the city, an immoral woman, who was a sinner. Sinner means she was infamous, infamous, she was notorious, she was wicked. A sinner in those times meant someone who knew it was wrong against the law of God and deliberately did it. All of us are saints and sinners, but in this case it's referring to someone who lived an immoral life, someone who's considered to be infamous, someone considered to be notorious, someone considered to be wicked. With this woman with this reputation, she comes in. When she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, obviously from the courtyard she could see, or others may have told her he was there, uh, that she brought an alabaster fla uh, flask an alabaster flax of fragrant oil. Now, this was a very expensive uh, perfume, a very expensive ointment. And she brought this when she heard Jesus was there. It says she, Jesus was sitting at the table. And when she heard he was there, she brought an alabaster flax of very expensive oil. 38. And stood at his feet behind him weeping. She came at his feet weeping, and she began to wash his feet with her tears. It says weeping and tears. This means, saying she had deep sorrow, deep sorrow over her sins, deep sorrow over her sins. And uh, she, was, uh, she was so upset that she washed, she cried so much it fell all over his, his feet. And in to clean his feet in an act of kindness and hospitality, she cleaned his feet with the hair of her head. Imagine back then, uh, men and women did not wear shoes like we do. They wore sandals. And if you wore sandals, and in the Middle East of that time, the dusty roads, they're dusty now. Our streets get dusty too. Imagine how Jesus' feet may have been. Well, she cleaned them off with her own hair. And listen to this. Then she kissed his feet. After she kissed him, an act of kindness, an act of hospitality, a way of showing how grateful she was, his being there. Maybe he had done something for her in the past. Whatever it was, she wept. The Lord said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. She was mourning over her sins, so much so that she cried, cried bitter tears, but tears of joy over his feet. And then she anointed him with this fragrant oil, showing her love and affection. The weeping, the tears, kindness, hospitality, the anointing of the oil, love and affection for him, for what he had done for her. 39 reveals inner thoughts. Now when the Pharisee, this being Simon, who had invited him, meaning Jesus saw this, he spoke to himself, probably said it under his breath. This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. Here we see the inner thoughts. Here we see the inner dislike. Here we see the inner disgust at the presence of this woman in his house. He is offended at her coming into his home. And also it showed as well what his intentions were for having Jesus there, trying to test Jesus, trying to see if Jesus was who he, who he claims to be or just trying to tempt Jesus or trick him. For he says, this man, First of all, being disrespectful to the Lord. If he were a prophet, because people said he was Jesus, a great prophet, 
would have known who and what manner of woman this is. This is not a woman you touch. This is not a woman you associate with. And she is touching him, for she is a wicked person, a notorious person. She is an infamous person. What is she doing touching him? What is he even doing permitting it? In other words, he was showing himself, as all the Pharisees did, most of them as being self-righteous and judgmental. Self-righteous and judgmental. I am mindful of where the Lord Jesus said the Son of Man did not come to judge the world, okay, but he came to save the world. And verse 40, and Jesus answered and said to him, remember Simon is self-righteous and judgmental. Jesus will be kind and gentle toward him. He said, Simon, I have something to say to you. In other words, Simon, you've invited me here. I have something to speak to you. I know what you just said. I know what your thoughts are. He's being kind and gentle with him. And he said, teacher, say it. Now, he's calling Jesus teacher, but he's lying. He's being misleading. He's being false. He's being hypocritical. Because he, remember, he had just thought it or said out loud, if this man were a prophet, then he would know who this woman is. Okay? Jesus went on. Jesus wants to give him a lesson. Jesus wants to win him over to faith. Jesus wants to convince him that he is the Messiah. He says, he gives a parable or an application. And saints, try to figure out who the characters are in this. In verse 41, there was a certain creditor who had two debtors. Saints, who is the creditor? Well, that's God. Who are the two creditors? Okay, the woman and Simon. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. In other words, the woman was notorious. She was the one who owed 500 denarii. She was the one that was the greater sinner. And the other 50. Both of them were sinners. Both of them had a debt they could not repay. Neither one of them had any righteousness on their own. But the creditor is God. The two debtors are uh, are the Pharisee and the woman. And Jesus went on to say in 42, and when they had nothing with which to repay, they could not repay the creditor. He freely, freely forgave them both. He pardoned their sin. That's God. He's referring to himself. Tell me, therefore, which one of them will love him more? Which one of them will have the greater love for him? The one that owed 500 denarii or the one that owed 50 denarii? And 43, and Simon answered and said, I suppose, okay, Simon knows good and well. He says, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he said to him, you have judged rightly. In other words, the answer was obvious, but the Pharisee did not want to be definite. He probably had an idea of what the Lord Jesus was trying to teach him. But being self-righteous and being judgmental, he didn't want to admit it. In verse 44, Jesus then turned to the woman and said to Simon, Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house. And now he's going to talk to the Pharisee about the basic courtesies that were to be given to any guest that came into a Jewish home, especially in the home of a Pharisee who knew the laws, both the customs, the ceremonial law, uh, as you know, the things that you did. Uh, he said, did you see this woman? Basically, the one you think is evil, the one you think is infamous, the one you think is notorious, the one you wouldn't touch or let into your presence. I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. The custom then was to give water for someone to wash their feet because, as I said earlier, the feet of the people then were very dusty and dirty. But she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. He's really letting Simon see this woman gave of her personal life. Simon, all you had to do was just give me a bowl of water and a towel. 
He went on to say, she gave, you gave me no kiss, because when you entered in those days too, you gave a kiss as a greeting, a greeting kiss. But this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. In other words, this woman who owed much, loved much. You did not give me a kiss, Simon. You did not provide for me to wash my feet. She has not stopped kissing me. And 46, you did not anoint my head with oil. That's what they were supposed to do as well. Water was, was uh, really all that was necessary, uh, but uh, uh, the oil was given. He said, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil, expensive oil. You didn't have to do that, anything close to it, but you didn't do even that. And then he makes it plain in 47. Therefore I say to you, and I'll say Simon, her sins which are many are forgiven. She's the 500 denarii. She's the one who had, been, who had been sexually immoral, it appears. For she loved much. God saw her love. God saw her faith. God saw her joy in being forgiven. God saw her mourning over her, her sins. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. You know, in other words, those without forgiveness are those who have no love. Simon, if you don't have forgiveness for this woman, you have no love. Because Simon, you're no better than she is. Except she becomes, outdoes you by her love and faith and sorrow. And he said to her, now here's where they're going to all get upset. Your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. Jesus now is giving Simon another hint that he is God. Because only God can forgive sins. We can forgive sins to that things that people do personally to us, but we can't forgive their sins in the sense of clearing them of debt. And the 49, and those who sat at the table with him, probably more Pharisees, began to say to themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? These were the Pharisees or any guests of the Pharisees or another Pharisees who were offended. The fact that God forgave her many sins filled her with great joy and love but it made everyone else there filled them with anger and disgust. 50, and he said to the woman, your faith has saved you, go in peace. In other words, the Lord Jesus was unaffected. He still speaks loving words to her. And the words weren't just to her, they were to Simon, to let Simon know, yes, I'm more than a prophet. I'm more than a man. I'm the son of man. I'm the son of God. I am God. And I can forgive sins. So, saints, what is this text all about in terms of with short verses? What is the lesson? We've all heard this story many times about the woman crying and washing Jesus' feet with her tears. And we've heard as well about the arrogant, unjust, self-righteous Simon. So what are the lessons that we can gather uh, from uh, this, uh, this text? Well, first of all, the first lesson that we, we can learn today is that wherever God is invited, he will come. The Lord Jesus will go to anyone who by faith calls upon him. As he came to the house, even of Simon of Pharisee, even if it's someone who, uh, who, who has not loved him, someone who has not cared for God, but someone who has come to need God. In other words, God does not hold our sins against us. Lord Jesus never turned down an invitation. God will always come to us, and it lets us know this too, that we should go wherever we are called. Even if it's someone we think who may be an enemy, if it's an opportunity to show Christ to them, to demonstrate our love for Christ, to demonstrate the love of Christ for them, then we should go. That's the first lesson. Second lesson, true faith 
is always demonstrated in acts of love. True faith is always demonstrated in acts of love. Simon the Pharisee had committed several social errors, as we, as we just read, in neglecting to wash Jesus' feet, to anoint his head with oil, and to offer Christ the kiss of greeting. The sinful, on, sinful woman, by contrast, on the other hand, lavished tears, expensive perfume, and kisses on her Savior. In this text, it is the grateful, immoral woman and not the disrespectful Pharisee whose sins are forgiven. Although it is God's grace through faith that saves us, not acts of our love or generosity, this woman's act demonstrated her true faith and the Lord Jesus honored her or honored her faith by forgiving her. So we see, saints, that true faith is not just spoken, it's demonstrated by the way we love. This woman showed her thanksgiving and her love for Christ uh, by going into the house of a Pharisee where she knew she wouldn't be accepted, but she went anyway to show her, kind, her love for him. And we should understand as well, be grateful that we have to demonstrate our love for Christ by being loving and kind to others. Our next lesson, we should always appreciate God's mercy and be grateful for his forgiveness. We should always appreciate God's mercy and be grateful for his forgiveness. Only those who realize the depth of their sin can appreciate the complete forgiveness God offers them. We see that with this woman, so uh, grateful to God that she cried tears, so, many, so much tears that it washed, it washed his feet. Jesus had rescued all of his followers, whether they were once extremely wicked or conventionally good, from eternal death. Do we appreciate the wideness of God's mercy? God loves those who lived a, a deliberately wicked life and those who even have lived what we would say uh, following the golden rule. But those things don't, don't save us, following the golden rule. And so the only thing that really saves us is belief in Christ. Do we understand how wide and far and deep is the love of Christ for us? Are we grateful for his forgiveness? Be grateful. There's a song, be grateful. I can't sing it right now. But we should always appreciate God's mercy and be grateful and thankful for all that he's done for us. And the season of Lent reminds us of how much he sacrificed for us. Fourth lesson, God's love for us is the most powerful force in the world. God's love for us is the most powerful force in the world. Through Jesus, God is saying that he loves us just the way we are. There's nothing we can do that can make him love us more than he does right now. If we will respond to his love and receive him by faith, he is not going to leave us where we are. He will reprogram us, reset us, and set us free to save him. But when we are even what God would like us to be, and we're never totally that until we get in heaven, but as we're making progress, he will not love us more bit, little, any, any more than he did before, if I'm getting it right, than he does now or when we began. That kind of love which God has, this unconditional love, is the most powerful love in the world. A love that expects nothing in return, a love that loves us, whether we're living a wicked, evil life, or whether we're sincerely trying to live the life that God called us. And our, our final, our fifth lesson is, we are to receive the unconditional love of God and pass it on to others. Unconditional love, saints, is the heart of the Christian community. And what God has done and what God has always had in mind for us, we are to receive his unconditional love and transmit it to others. That's how God's love is passed on. And we pass this love on whether that person seems even to be undeserving or unworthy because we're undeserving and unworthy as well. This is a real proof of our faith. 
So, saints, I, I pray that this Bible study has been a blessing uh, to you this morning as we prepare for worship. Realize this unconditional love of God is one that will always forgive us, always restore us, as long as we are sorry and wish God to change us. That's the story of Lent, that God sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. I pray this Bible study once again blesses you. Remember that we're having uh, our um, midweek Lenten service this Wednesday, uh, the 17th. I think it's St. Patrick's Day uh, at, uh, at St. Paul Lutheran Church. And our preacher will be the Reverend John Brazil. Once again, it will be at 7 o'clock. We will post as soon as I get it the link. It will be live streamed. If you're coming in person, uh, be sure to follow the three W's. You know, wear your mask, watch your distance, and if you've, uh, when you're there, wash your hands if need be. Uh, God continue to bless and keep you. Pray for us, the church, and we'll pray for you. May God bless you. Hope to see you or to worship with you very shortly. Take care.